Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Just a Tip, Episode 6. On today's episode, we're going to talk about last week's tips, gates and barriers and why they're so important, and also talk about Mooney Valley for this weekend. First up, we're going to talk about gates and barriers and why they're so important. And in a little uh, side note, sorry I'm sounding a little bit hoarse today, get the pun, but uh, yeah, I had three beers on the weekend and I'm just pulled up a little bit rough. <laughs> Gates are so important. Of course, gate one, why wouldn't you want it? Because it's the shortest way around the track. But, you know, definitely with a meeting like this one this week, where the rail is going to be in the true position on the Friday night and again on the Saturday, you know you're going to get those first three to four meters are going to be chopped up. So gates are very crucial for a meeting like this. Now you're thinking, well, if my horse draws in nice and, you know, low, especially like winks and three, it's going to be easy running. But, you know, with that chewed up turf, it could be a little bit interesting for your horse. So a lot of the horses I've picked, um, you know, if they're drawn in a you know, low gate, I've decided to go away from them a little bit because you lose that little bit of advantage that the early gate does give. When looking at the gate, you have to see what kind of horse that you're backing. Now, if you've got a horse that likes to be on speed, of course, like, you know, a lower gate is much easier for it because it can just get out in front, set the tempo of the race and, you know, set it up for itself. If you have a horse that likes to go back, then, you know, a wider barrier is not as important because, you know, you can just go back with the horse and, you know, it's not too much of an issue. If you have a horse that likes to go back on the fence, you'll see that you get stuck on the fence. You'll go, you know, three or four, five deep on the fence and that's a pretty yuck spot to be because you have to go around the entire field just to get out. And that's the same as a, a starter, a leader, because you, you know, come away from the wide barrier, you know, just like Tally in the uh, Caulfield Cup last Saturday, and you can see the horse will run out of gas because it had to get all the way to the front, uses all of its energy early, and then tries to set the tempo from there. Much harder to do it that way. So when you're looking at a horse to back, gates are critically and, you know, very important, and especially this week, as I said, because of that, you know, rail being in the true position, both on the Friday night and the Saturday, you'll see that those inside gates are you know, a little bit more chewed up. Just a little tip though, and something that I like to follow, is that if your horse is a leader, especially if it you know, draws wide and you're thinking, oh, I might sack it, if it, you know, SPs for less than $3, it's usually a good thing. And that's probably seven to you know, eight out of 10 times. And you're thinking, how's that work? Well, professional money is how that works. If a horse starts favorite and it draws wider than 10 and it's a leader, then you know the money will tell you if it's going to win or not. If it SPs for less than three, as I said, then you know there's a lot of money coming for it. If it SPs favorite, it's even better. And so if you do have a horse but you're not sure if you want to back it or not, and the money's still coming for it, I'd definitely say keep it in your book, definitely back it. Let's move on to last week's tips. Now I'm putting a pretty big massive line straight through the whole lot of uh, my tips for last week. Uh, because of just the wind. The sheer hurricane-like atmosphere going on at Caulfield last week can put any horse off its game. And I think that if you just, you know, if you like the horse before the meeting, I'd still keep liking it after the meeting. So I'm just going to go through the runners pretty quickly, but, you know, definitely, you know, put a line through it. Don't worry about it. It's going to read poor in your form line, but I bet you there's going to be a few horses that finish, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th, and are going to come through next week and win because... The wind was just so unpredictable and crazy. Race one, seal feed. Now, it just got lost out there. Once the tempo dropped off, it tried to go wide. Wasn't a bad option, but you know, four wide on the turn. I just just never really got into it and just didn't give that much of a kick at the end. I think forgive that, definitely back it next time. And I think it stayed on well for fourth. Another bullseye went way too far back and hit, hit the line strong for fifth. And I think definitely something to also follow through. Race two, Morton's Fork. Now that is the biggest moral I've ever seen in my entire life. You watch the replay, this horse cannot get out. I can't believe it. I'm just watching it at the racetrack and I'm just like, please, please, please. And it was 200 meters past the post. Please. Okay, it lost. All right, fair enough. You couldn't get out. But next time it's gonna have a really tough task and I'm looking at targeting that horse again when it gets to stand down. So about four to six weeks from now, when it gets to the end of its prep, that's when I'm gonna attack it again. Race three, super cash. Now, unfortunately, it got scratched. I thought it was a pretty good thing, and it did, you know, get a little bit of support in the market early in the morning. Came in from 460 to 420, and just unfortunate. And definitely forgive back at next start. Race four, Savan. Now, this is the horse I thought that did the best for the entire day. Now, led, you know, struggled in the wind, the whole thing, and it still gave a kick and hit the line strong. Now, I think definitely full of merit. Definitely next time up is, you know, a big chance. It's rocked up about 17 dollars in the early markets for. You know, it's next run, and I think that's well overs. And definitely Tiamo Grace, who, you know, was, you know, out of luck on the fence down the back, is definitely something to watch as well. Both of them definitely in my black book for next time. Race 5, Kent. Race never suited, slow tempo. Was 11 lengths off the leader at the uh, turn. Made up about 5 lengths over the whole straight. And uh, I think, you know, 
at that uh, distance again that I'll be considering it, but you know, it'd have to be a good each way price again. Race six, it's somewhat. Unfortunately, he got stuck behind that 100 to one pop, you know, and drifted all the way back. I really thought after the race that Hugh Bowman gave the horse a terrible ride, but when you watch the replay a few times, it wasn't as bad. He drew a nice gate, squeezed on the horse a little bit out of the gates to push into that, you know, position up forward, and got, you know, pulled all the way back to three back on the fence. Now, that's what I was talking about with the gates before. When that happens, you just, it just is a horror story. But I thought that he rode the horse not too bad, just got stuck behind the 100 to 1 pop and just didn't quite have, you know, enough zip to get him in the end. Race 7, Tycoon Tara. Now, got a little bit unlucky, had to face the breeze the whole way, and probably started a little bit shorter than I would have liked her to. But, you know, she had a good race. She's at the end of her preparation, you know, definitely next season, you know, when she, I think she becomes a six year old, I think. Um, up in Sydney again, that's when I'll start targeting her again. And I think Shillelagh is definitely the one to follow out of this race. Looked like I had everything to give and almost fell. Now, it reads as 24 and a half lengths last, but uh, don't, you know, don't worry about that. Put a line through that. It's next start, definitely something to target. Race 8, Jamaica. Well, she's just super impressive and she's on her way to a Melbourne Cup. Now, she's got one and a half kilo penalty from her win on the weekend. And I still think that was really light. I was thinking two, maybe even two and a half because it was that impressive. And, you know, definitely when right before the jump when she got out to about 4, 420 right at the end, I thought that was perfect. Definitely something to have a saver on. Unfortunately, I had most of my money on Articus who finished 13th. Uh, it, was, it was a, you know, a forgive run, but I'm not sure. The horse apparently, when the jockey got off, said that he could, couldn't even blow out a candle. He didn't even give any effort. So the horse is definitely fit enough. I don't know if it was 2,400 meters. I think he just got stuck three wide the whole trip, and that was just really crap up into that wind. And I think in the McKinnon, if it's soft as well, I would definitely think I'll back it again. But I wasn't sure with the firm ground and with the 2,400 meters, definitely some question marks still around Articus. Uh, but when I saw him in the stalls, he looked impressive. And Scottish, of course, had a really nice run, ran second. So first, second, and 13th, not too bad, really. And I thought the best run out of the race was Al Moonquith. Definitely something to look forward to into the Melbourne Cup. Gets in with a nice way, and I think could be a little bit of a smoky for one of those places. Race 9, Hellbent. Now, he got scratched, and when I heard that come over the announcement, I was furious. I was getting more money for my refunding of bets than I was actually winning on the day, and this just really annoyed me. I went and saw him in the stalls after. He had a little cut on his back leg, and he was, you know, pretty fired up. And it was just, you know, a bit of mistakes, and DK Weir was going off his actual nuts about how frustrated he was. I thought that horse was a sure thing. Everyone had him anchored in the quaddy. I thought that, you know, definitely that 210 was worth it. And you can see it when our boy Malachi comes out and wins, does the exact same pattern as Hellbent would have. And I think that Hellbent would have beaten that field by three lengths. You know, Vidora had no favours in the race and Fart and I probably should have won. And uh, with that breeze, you know, give it a forgive. Put that down as a win in, the, in his book for next start. But just, you know, super frustrating day by that point. And when Hellbent got scratched, I was just super annoyed. Race 10, Voodoo Lad. Well, that horse is bloody super freaky, and those sectionals at the end was awesome. Five wide the whole trip and still won. Definitely one of those horses coming off that group one form that just looked insane. I thought that takedown was very dangerous, and all that form from Sydney has come down, and he looks good. I think next start, definitely in the money again for him, and that second was impressive. So just to wrap up from last week, a little bit messy, but there's some horses there that I thought were, you know, really good. And as I said, put line through it, but some of those horses will definitely come out and win for us. And uh, I think backing them next start is the right idea. So let's get into the tips for this week. I think that the, on the Friday night, the first couple of races are pretty hard to pick. There's a lot of good horses, but they're quite short odds. And those each way chances are, you know, genuine second and third horses, really. You don't really have that much chance to, you know, pull a roughie out of that. So I've stuck to the last few on the Friday night, and I'm going to do the Saturday and, you know, hopefully find a winner there. Friday night, hashtag let's build the bank night. Now I've started with race five, number six, Runson. I think it's just got over the odds there, and I think, you know, if you look at its last three starts, it's been very impressive. It has drawn a little wide, but I think that'll be all right. The horse doesn't mind it out that wide. If you go two starts back, looked like a genuine winning chance at 9.55, but drew even wider. I think with a soft run, it follows those leading horses in. I think it'll be a good, you know, each way bet for sure. I think number five, Golden Spin, is definitely the best horse in the race. But it's, you know, come up really short, and I'm willing to risk it in this type of race. Race six, number three, Regiz. This is the horse I talked about a few weeks ago. Had a nice finish behind Chetwood, and you know, Chetwood's a gun. And I think that third up for DK Weir is definitely, you know, all ticks. 
But, you know, as I said before, this horse has burnt me a few times before, and it is at rock bottom prices. And I think that number seven, Mr. Individual, is definitely a, you know, a big chance to beat it too. It's probably going to be between those two, probably Quinella chances for both. Uh, but I've landed on number three with Geese because it definitely has the talent, and I think if it comes third up, it's going to win. Race seven, the Manicato Stakes. Now, it's a fantastic little feature race on the Friday night, and I think that, you know, I'm going to go with number 10, English. Now, it's come up at $9, and I think there's a little bit of overs there, and definitely, you know, with $3 the place, and I think that it'll have the nice run. Third up, this prep looks fantastic. I know it's, you know, failed for the, you know, the punches in the last few, but I think this time up is the one to go. It's looked a little soft in its first two, and it came fourth behind uh, our boy Malachi, and take down and all those horses ran really well on the weekend you know wins in seconds so i think that if you follow that form definitely something to put a bet on on the friday night i've gone around chautauqua for a few reasons one he's drawn the pole and you know that's pretty nasty as is the way he likes to race and i think that it's going to just be a big task to get through all that mess there's going to be five or so back markers you know all there looking for those runs and i think that with english just sitting just in front of them it's probably a good bet to have now, Buffering will get a nice, easy lead, and I think that it will just zip off the back the last 50 metres, and you could be on a winner. Race 8, I've landed on number 7, Fast Cash. This horse has just been missed in the market. Fantastic run last start, and I think that it's definitely a good each-way chance. I've gone around number 11, Sabacus, but if Sabacus gets a good run and gets a lot closer than it did before, definitely the one to beat. But I think those each-way claims, especially around Mooney Valley, because it will be leading, is Fast Cash. Start off with race one, the two-year-old race. Now, I think that, you know, try and stick away from these races because they're really hard to predict. But I like number eight, Louisa from Exposed Form. Her win was awesome up in Sydney and she beat the odds-on favourite. It was paying like $1.70 or something like that and she rolled it. Looked very impressive. And I think that uh, number two, Azazil, is definitely the best on the trial. Now, I opened up at $12 yesterday. I took a little bit of that. It came into nines this morning. I took a little bit of that. It's now $7, and that is ridiculous. You can still get a little bit more value in the market. Look on Sportsbet. Definitely the best market at the moment, I think. And, uh, you know, if you can get that $7, probably a good price for it at each way. But the money is coming for it. So, you know, that's a little nice little tip for the two-year-old race as well. If the money comes, definitely jump on. Now race two. Now I think I'm gonna have you know little bets on this one because it's a little bit hard. A lot of older horses, but I've landed on number seven, gun case, and number one, felines. Now, you know, both of them I can pot a little bit around them, and that's why I'm gonna keep these bets nice and small because you know both of them could get beat. Number seven, gun case, has drawn wide, but its last victory was impressive. Now I think definitely the one that's on top for me, but you have to respect felines. Drawn uh, the pole this time up and then you know 60 kilos last time and looked good. And uh, I think that with the 60 kilos again, it's going to be you know hard to beat. But if the pole isn't playing that uh, well for us with that chopped up ground, I definitely think gun case is the one. But as I said, small bets keep it safe. Race three, I think this is the value race of the day with a lot of short favourites in you know the other races, but definitely a lot of juice in the market. There's a lot of horses I like here. A lot of them have come through that race that I you know black booked a week uh, ago. And I think that if you find the runner you liked out of that replay, that's where the winning form's going to come. Now, just talking about the horses in the race, number three, Sweet Sherry. She's drawn barrier 18. You know, forget her. I think that and it's too wide for her. Number four, My Country, talented, but has drawn 16. That was the runner-up from last race. And I have a small suspicion they're going to scratch. Unconfirmed, but it's just my gut feeling. Number five, Modern Wonder, was scratched this morning. Uh, but you definitely looked at her last sectional. She ran 11.8 and 22.10, the race fastest last start. So definitely one to follow. And now she's going to be on the odd week against these other horses. So definitely one to follow. Number six, Prompt Response, was very unlucky its last start. Number eight, Gretna. Now, was going to have the magic man on his back, but uh, unfortunately a typhoon, uh, you know, in Hong Kong has kept him landed in there. Same with Sammy Clipperton. So those, all those races with uh, those jockeys will be, you know, changed. Uh, but uh, I think with a good gate and his, you know, second behind Sylphie, two starts back. And that's that favourite that got rolled last week, though. Definitely good form to follow. And number nine, Brulee. You know, she had so much to give. And at $8, is probably found in the market enough. But, you know, definitely that, that one where I liked its replay the most. Number 12, Motown Lil. Now, that was one of my best bets going about three weeks ago. Forgive its last run. It's changed its jockey, which is good. Hopefully, Dwayne Dunn doesn't give it a dig out of the gates. It probably will miss the kick. Now, that's hopefully the jockey doesn't panic because that's what happened last time. Jockey panicked, gave it a bit, upset the horse. Let the horse flop out of the gate, let it go last, and it will go around the whole lot of them at the end. So with my betting, I've gone with 8 and 12. 
you know, Motown Little 12, jockey change is a positive. It is wide. It probably will miss the uh, jump, so it's going to have to come from the back, but I think its sectionals are good enough to do it. Number eight, Gretna. Now, I liked it more with the Magic Man, but depending on the jockey, it's probably another good each-way chance. So two nice good each-way chances in this race. Race four, the obvious is Ken's Dream, and I think that at that price, it's rock bottom, though. It's a classic cult, third up, probably, you know, ticks a few boxes. And definitely the one to beat. But number seven, Maddie with uh, fourteen dollars is definite overs. It's two starts on the synthetic of both being progressive, and I think with that, you know, if it keeps progressing the way it is, it could be a danger. Now it's on grass for its first time, as I said, but it does have a bit of form behind of uh, you know in front of a few good uh, horses that have come out and placed since. And I think that if you're looking for a bit of value, that's the way to go. Race five and landed a number nine Alaskan Rose. One of my favorite horses, I followed her all prep so far. Now nine dollars is overs for her. And I think that if she stays at that price, definitely something to back. Now Gabella runs on the Friday night and she'd be you know, pretty able to frank that form. And if she does well, then Alaskan Rose should do well as well. If you look at her section, it was the last start. From the four to the two, she ran 11.53. Now it's bloody quick for a race horse. And she had to do all that work to get from the back into you know, a competitive position. She got all the way out to Euro Angel, then Euro Angel gave the kick, and you know, Alaskan Rose is only a couple lengths off the back of that. So definitely on that run, I would say that she's a definite live chance in race five. Race six, and this is my back of the day besides Winx, of course, is number one, I am a star. She just rated too well, she has a good gait, and I think she's gonna be definitely one hard to beat. She's at $2.80 at the moment, and that's probably getting close to her mark. I'd take $2.50, but I definitely won't take anything in the black. And I think that if you're going to go around that, definitely number two, La Luna Rossa at that each way price. Forgive her last run, she was a bit, you know, disappointing in the blinkers first time, got keen, and then had slow recovery or the thumps or something like that, one of the two. And definitely, you know, forgive on that run. And number four, Chapanda is the only one that I'm willing to give, you know, a little bit of, uh, um, you know, money for as well. But I definitely think that number one, I am a star, is the better of the day. Race seven, number three, he or she. Now how that he started at this price, I really don't know. $4.80, that is so juicy. The horse was placed twice behind group one winners, behind Black Art Bar, uh, this prep, behind Palantino. Like definitely, definitely $4.80 is well over. And I think that it's been missing the market, definite back. Race eight, I've narrowed it down to two. Now I think number four, excess knowledge if it's dry. Number one, Gallant if it's wet. Now I think that you know it's only going to be two to fifteen mils on Saturday, and if there's a strong wind, it'll dry out quickly. So probably stick with excess knowledge. But Gallant definitely has a lot of X factor. That close up second to Jamaica, you know, giving her four kilos was really impressive. Definite smoky for you know the Melbourne Cup, and I think I'm just gonna you know savor her, see what she does. If she does really well on the weekend, probably going to be you know in that uh, you know in the money for the Melbourne Cup. And number four, excess knowledge could be the same way, but definitely excess knowledge at this point. Just a little side note on that race. Grand Marshal was only going round because it got accidentally nominated. So probably not a horse to be on. It meant to get you know nominated at Moe on Wednesday, but they accidentally nominated the wrong horse, had to scratch it, and now it's running on Saturday. So you know definitely stick away for number two. Race nine, Winks. Not really much to say here, but I'm gonna do a little short video at the end, uh, put it in another segment and you know talk more about the Cox plate, but definitely Winks for me. Easy. Race 10, I've landed on number three, Veladivo. Veladivo. Now it's a good little each way bet to end the day. You know, I think that its last couple of starts have been really impressive and the 2000 meter isn't gonna worry it at all. It's got form around takedown, prize icon, so definitely at $12, it's probably double the price I would have had it at. It's a leader, which is a positive at Mooney Valley. And I think that if it can lead, get some soft sectionals, we'll definitely get there at $12 on Saturday, could be a nice little bank builder at the end of the day as well. And I think each way, number six, Sosi Bon, is a lot of quality. Definitely on that last start, looked like it was looking for 2,000, maybe flashing home late. Same with one prize icon and two, Sacred Elixir. Definitely you know, another horse to follow, but I think that juicy $12 in the last race of the day is something to back. Beautiful, and that's racing for this week at Mooney Valley. Two awesome days of racing, and I think that Saturday is going to be really impressive. Good luck to Wings. I hope you win because you're going to turn yourself into a superstar. 12 in a row, make it 13. Unlucky for some, but not for you. And definitely, I'll be cheering you home. Last year it was super impressive. I was there. Wish I was there again this year. And uh, good luck punting.